Was that nice and loud? I have a feeling that was nice and loud. Nice and ASMR, I feel. Can, does opening a can count as actually? You know what that does. Literally any sound you can think of would count as ASMR, including this. I drank that way too fast for it to count, but regardless, can't I can't watch Agents of Shield without a bit of Seven Up. I'd prefer Dr Pepper, but any compromise is a good compromise as long as it's a soft drink. Anyway, hey, how's it going guys? I'm Paradoxic, and welcome back to Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Um, this time on Season 1, Episode 11, titled The Magical Place. The aftertaste of the 7-Up is very, very nice. Um, but yeah, Episode 11, The Magical Place. So, Episode 10 was The Bridge, and we saw both the, the return of both Mike and Centipede. Centipede who turned Mike into the super-powered juggernaut that he is. Well, not really juggernaut, but super-powered super human being that he is. Um, but Mike returned because Centipede returned. Um, they rescued Edison Poe from a, from a prison um, by sending in soldiers with the Centipede technology. And then they figured, you know, who, who, who best to help them fight back against Centipede than a former recipient of Centipede technology slash serum. So they called in their good friend Mike, who had actually been working with S.H.I.E.L.D. But he'd been training with S.H.I.E.L.D. to study his powers and to actually hone them a little more and to actually use them for good. Um, and he and he, he showed that, that like the episode itself showed that Mike at heart is a good man wanting to provide for his son. So, you know, like understanding that he was a super, super powered individual, he learned and, and he learned to cooperate with S.H.I.E.L.D. and to work with them to see what was what with his powers and whatnot. So he was leading a good life. He was leading a good life. And then Coulson called him in for this particular mission. Um, and then they ran into more of the soldiers and whatnot, and they investigated some of that stuff. And we met Edison Poe, who was the man that they, um, the centipede rescued from the prison. Um, and he was labelled as the tactical st uh, strategist, uh, strateg strategist, 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 strategist sounds a bit more like... Uh, I hate it. I mean, I, 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 it, this is a common thing. I like sometimes I pronounce words and I think I mispronounce them, and then I pronounce them over and over again until something sounds more fluid, like it rolls off the tongue easier. Strategist, strategist rolls off the tongue, uh, rolls off the tongue, and um, it rolls off the tongue uh, a lot. I can't talk English anymore. <laughs> That's an hour struggle of mine. But anyway, tactical strategist. He were he that was the role he played over at Centipede and Rayner, as far as I'm aware, was the scientist, although they did actually have lab coats as well. Um but she was also kind of like the let's say like kind of like the um the the face of the organization. Like she she's the one who actually went out to, you know, sweet talk all of the possible recruits into joining Centipede, starting with Mike, who she met in the hospital, then Chan Ho Yin, I believe his name was, or oops, the man who turned into Scorch back in episode five. Um <laughs> And yeah, again, episode numbers and the names don't always line up in my head. They don't, that, that's the trouble of not starting from episode one. They don't always line up in my head. Um, episode five, which was the girl in the flower dress, that's when that's we met Chan Ho Yin. I be, again, I believe his name was. Um, she sweet talked him, and she's been sweet talking everyone. She, she like any time. I think it's the clairvoyant is the one that no one ever inquires about. Like they always receive messages from him. No one's ever allowed to ask him any questions. And you know Edison Poe, he even stands by the rule that if you ask him any questions about the clairvoyant, then he will stab you in the eye, then to the point of death. So you know no one is allowed to contact the clairvoyant. They he he contacts you. That that that, that that's how the system works. So he is. The clairvoyant, I believe, from from what they've said so far, I believe he's the one who actually looks, like, uses his mind to look out into the world and see all the potential recruits, whether he has abilities or whether he just has a really, really good Cerebro-style computer. We don't know yet, but the clairvoyant, um, he's the one who, who I, I think, uh, like, I think, I think, yeah, like, that. that's the way I've kind of visualized it now. Like, that, like that's the way the hierarchy works. Like, the clairvoyant looks for people and then sends Raina out to find them. And Raina finds them and also does all the the research in regards to the centipede serum. And uh, Edison Poe is the, ta is the tactical strategist. So he, you know, he kind of conducts how the, how the system flows and how the organization itself works and all of that stuff. Um, and he was in the military, so that is kind of his specialty. But, uh, but yeah, centipede, since we, since we saw them last, they, um, they had actually used um, utilized Chan's um, blood plate, his fire retardant blood, 
fire retardant blood plates uh, platelets a little better and use that to stabilize the um the centipede serum but they also like after having found out that mike was working with shield um reyna also realized that they hadn't actually injected him with any centipede serum for a long long time so something else was clearly keeping him alive so then they needed to find out what it was and it clearly came from shield so that's why by the end of the episode they had kidnapped colson and presumably also killed mike um mike they they made a deal with mike to give colson over for um custody of um of ace his son but then mike had a last minute heroic change of heart and he ran back into the fray to try and get colson but they blew up the bridge before that could happen and he was seemingly engulfed in the flames so there was he was no longer left standing off that explosion, but they blew up the bridge and they blew up the car that they seemingly took Colson into, but then a chopper came out from under the bridge, so they were flying him off in that, and then they shot Ward, who probably isn't dead. Um, but Mike, Mike probably is dead. Mike probably is dead. Um, which, I mean, I, 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 mean I, I seem a lot less tearful than I was last time, because again, I'm waiting for that confirmation. Like, if, I mean you see him like he did die on screen he did get he did get caught in the explosion on screen but at the same time it's like there's no body like in t i think in tv show rules it's if if they don't die on screen and also if there's no body recovered then that's when you know that they're going to pop up at some point so he did die on screen but they didn't recover a body i mean he's superhuman so i feel like he should have some kind of advantage in terms of like being able to survive a bluff like an, uh, uh, the blast of an explosion like Maybe he comes out with second or third degree burns, but that should be the brunt of it, I feel. Like, he shouldn't really be, like, dead, dead. Or maybe he's, like, just, like, on the borderline. Maybe he's drifting between life and death, and they just about managed to save him. But either way, he is in trouble if he's still alive at all. But if he's not, then we will get confirmation of that soon. But um, they've taken Coulson and they took Coulson to um Raina said we want you to tell us about the day after you died so clearly they know about um Coulson having died um and the fact that he was resurrected as well so they want to know what kind of technology shield has that can resurrect people um um because I think, yeah, because I think they, 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 they've been using the same eye, eye technology as as we saw in Akila Amador, like, um, that, like, kind of assassin for hire type chick, um, where, like, they give them orders through the, through the eye kind of, um, technology, and then, you know, if they, if they go out of line, or if they go out of order, or in this case, if, um, if, like, a, like, a member of Centipede gets captured by the, en- by the enemy side, then they just get executed on the spot, it's like, you know what, don't worry about captivity or execution, or interrogation or anything like that, you, you don't need to worry about that, because we're gonna off you right on the spot, so we have nothing to lose, so, yeah, fun times, fun times, but, um, I, 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 feel, I feel like at this point they do know that S.H.I.E.L.D. has some tech on their side that Centipede isn't aware of yet, or they haven't really acquired yet, so that's why they, they, they want Coulson more than anything, um, but we will wait and see what happens there, um, we also had May and Sky having their own little, um, emotional debacle, um, in the sense that, um, Sky did approach Coulson once more about um finding her mother and then to try and keep her off the trails just a little bit he told um he told her that May was also um on that particular breadcrumb trail but then warned May against actually telling her anything and then May was salty about um Ward seemingly trying to save her during a fight and then she kind of released that anger onto Sky being like oh if you can't let your personal stuff go then you shouldn't be here da 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 Sky got rightfully upset and tore up all of her papers thinking that you know it, it, it wasn't worth her time so <sighs> all drama all just another day of the, another day at the shield office on the shield bus full of drama full of drama so yeah that is pretty much all i have from this point on we had some fun moments as well we had um we discovered that, um that fitzsimmons gun was what kept was what actually kept um mike stable and that's what stabilized him and stopped him from exploding um and we had Gemma um kind of drooling over mike's body because he's now a you know like an asgardian human almost um all of that fun stuff uh but yeah that's pretty much all i have from the last one so the magical place let's see exactly how magical this place is no doubt it's tahiti no doubt we will be exploring tahiti but let's go let's go find out is that a roomba now it's a flash grenade. 
Boom, there we go. Shield Anus to the rescue of alien tech. There we go. There we go. Oh, that's a Black Widow move right there. No, I love her even more for that. Oh, unleash the drones, baby. Sneezy. Hey, do not shoot the drones. Yep, straight to the roof. Mm-hmm, and a whole team ready to take him down. That is some beautiful teamwork. That is some top-notch stuff. Agent Hand, I believe. Victoria Hand. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's Victoria Hand. We were hoping you could help us find a friend. Yeah. We need fresh eyes. It's been 36 hours since... Oh, the so the more people they have to actually find Coulson. Okay. Agent Hand is giving another briefing. You're the consultant, the one who shot Agent Sitwell. Technically, that wasn't me, but... I want you off this plane immediately. Whoa, this guy's a what? part of the team. Wait, will this girl be of any use to us on this plane? Oh, please, mate, please, mate, come on. No. Oh, you've got to be shitting me. Level. Confiscate her laptop and phone. Then have is, it, uh... is this still about the parent crap? Amoreso, I've seen firsthand what you can do, even without shield resources. Hmm. Huh. So she could still do it on the side. We have something for you. In exactly 12 minutes. Good luck. What's all this code? This is flying right past my head. I'm not Drax. I can't catch it. Ow. Fuck. Oh. Don't touch Lola. Yeah. Hands off Lola. Seeing a boy lose his father at such a young age as you did. Oh. Crap. For some reason, Agent Coulson, you're different. Now, why is that? Because he's Phil Coulson, bitch. Rochambeau. Scissors, rock, face. Rochambeau is rock, paper, scissors. Okay. Oh, they're exposing him to the sky. They're exposing him to midair travel. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, that's the best. That's the best. Oh, that's it. See, that's how you do an interrogation. You scare them into actually answering questions. Oh, Jesus. Oh, there we go. There we go. Yeah, choke him out. Choke him out. There we go. Heimlich. Heimlich. There we go. There we go. Where the hell is he? There's nothing but desert for hundreds of miles. It's the perfect location to keep but someone prisoner. It. It's nice here. Oh crap, okay. Should have known that yeah, was gonna be a thing. Agent Melinda May. Oh Shoot. snap! <laughs> Sky Look, clearly there's been a misunderstanding. I'm a legitimate businessman. Shield I'm impressed. I'm impressed. Funds into an offshore account for some very bad oh, God, she's she's got that stone called mannerism going on, the whole demeanor. Catching those guys. We've got some work to do. Oh, I love that. I love that. that was amazing. I, I, I cannot hate for that. That was amazing. Director Fury, Commander Hill, everyone wants an update. Coulson's a special I, guy. I don't understand it. No single agent is that important. Phil Coulson is. Coulson is. Yeah. The clairvoyant would like to speak to you. Oh. He wants to speak to Reyna. Okay. That's a first. I agree. I agree with what? Yes, I'm here. Oh, not anymore. Oh, snap. That's what he agreed to. That's what she agreed to, to kill him off. Jesus. Wow, and killing him through his phone as well. The Iron Man 1 thing that um that Stain had. The iron, the one from Iron Man 1 that just paralyzes you. I think that's what it reminded me of. Sky's no use to us on this plane. How can you say that? Are you kidding me? Not with all these agents here. Over her shoulder, monitoring her every move. Ah. Uh, wanted her off the plane. Outside the system. Ah. Uh, okay. Been. Okay. So that was the plan all along. You don't have to assume the worst of me. I'm sorry, May. I may have been momentarily pissed at you. Oh, this is the real LAPD. Oh! Boom! Okay. Typing, I'm typing. Yeah, this is the new Melinda May, people. This is the new Melinda May. Today was the first time I personally made contact. It actually was. My heart's still racing. Yeah, she's such a fangirl. Such a fangirl. The clairvoyant, he knows what the president dreams about at night. Okay, that's just creepy. I want what 
That's just invasive. The secret shield is keeping from you. She just wants to know about the resurrection. And that's it. Uh, and it means they would both find out, so Coulson would be on the receiving end of that as well. Maybe use it to track her down. Click there. Could be Raina who's simply who pays them. Hello, Raina. Yeah, mm-hmm. Let's see what you've been up to. Print that. It makes sense that she'd be the financial side of the business as well in terms of actually paying people. They're your family. Your only family. Since you've lost your mother, too. Now. Oh, Jesus. After all you sacrificed. Sacrifice is part of the job. So no biological no, family at all. didn't just give your life. And she did love you, Agent Coulson. <sighs> How could you know that? Oh, oh, God, Coulson, no, don't listen to her. Coulson, do not listen to her. She's Can playing you with your heartstrings. This is what she does. She plays with your mind. I didn't even have a chance to say goodbye. She cried for days after Shield told her you died. They shut her. Oh, Coulson. What happened in Tahiti? It's a magical play. Oh, he's been conditioned to say that, hasn't he? Keep saying that. He's been conditioned to say that. I don't know why. You backed my decision to kick Sky off the plane. Seems like it worked out. Seems mm -hmm. like you played me. Look, oh, she did. Personal. And she did it very well. My team <laughs> Just coast. like she would. Send back if you want. Sandy Beach. Blue waves. Just as I remember it. Was that a conditioning too? Focus on the detail. Maybe he's been conditioned to even visualize Tahiti. You feel that? Maybe he was somewhere else. Oh, it's a hospital room. It's a hospital room. It's not even it's not a beach at all. I got this. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah, you got that indeed. Oh maybe not so oh maybe not so much. Ooh. And he was right, Fitz was right. They really kinda of blow your skull off with a punch. Oh we good. Come on. Oh jeez. Whoa. Oh, we're just putting it in his mouth instead. Oh, Jesus. Ay, ay, ay. Yep, screw the fool. I'm just making him swallow the damn thing. Listen to him. Let me die, please. Oh, please. they've cut his head open. Please, I'm begging you, let me die. Please, <laughs> let me die, please. You're saying, let me please. die? Let me die, please. Let me die. Carlson, why? Why do you want to die? It's for his own good. Oh, there we go. That's it. Oh, God, I've been waiting so long for that. Come on, Carlson. Come on. Come on. Sky's here. Sky's here. Sky's here. Sky's here. Come on. Come on. Come on. Sky's here. Sky's here. Yeah. Yeah, she's here. She's here. Oh jeez, that was harrowing to watch. They had his head sliced nice open and were firing lasers into her, into his freaking brain. Yeah. Bet there aren't any flower dresses where she's going. Amen. Mhm. Mm Just antihistamines, lots of them. Look, Carlson's back, baby. Come on, group hug. Screw the mission. The mission's over. I just want to say. Group hug. Thank you. Okay, maybe not. Maybe thank you's enough. Fury brought me in during the seventh operation. The seven operations, we Jesus. Conscious to monitor brain activity. We wanted to restore the man you'd once been. So we gave you a pleasant... Tahiti. ...of a beautiful island. Tahiti. You'd lost your will to live. We tried to give it back. Oh, Jesus. Yep, Dandy's gone. That's all he needs to hear for now, anyway. Good God. Marvel's Agents of Shield will return in a moment. Cheers, Phil. Mike, he's alive. I told you, third degree burns. That's it. That's the worst he failed. Oh, jeez, Mikey boy. Oh, and he lost his leg. Good morning, Mr. Peterson. Stand by for further instruction. Oh, no. no. They've captured him. Oh, good. No. Come on. 
No. They've catch they captured him again. God damn it. But hey. Mike's alive. Mike is alive, just like I prophesied. He got out with what looks like third degree burns. I, I, I don't know what the difference is between them. I, I don't even know how high it goes. It was fourth, fifth, sixth, tenth. But he got out with some degree of burns and he's also missing a leg. Uh, but I think he's, I'm pretty sure he's now under the captivity of Centipede again. So he's back in their clutches with the shield technology keeping him stable. So that spells bad news for Mikey. But goddamn, this. This episode. Wow, okay. So there's a lot to unpack here. The, the, this, this is going to be the un, the unboxing of of reviews and discussions and speculations and all that kind of sort of stuff. It's going to be an unboxing of, of thoughts and um, and little pieces. Um, so, yeah, I think what hit me the hardest was Mace May calling for Sky to be removed. I was like, okay, she can't still be reeling in from the whole sky wanting to find her mother thing like that's just being shady now that, that, that's just that's just throwing shade her way for unnecessary reasons and i was like I, m m momentarily momentarily i was angry at her being like why, why? She, she, she's like like ward was right she's proven herself to be an asset for the team time and time again but it's like it's like that that old stuff is still probably getting in the way of like how may view sky as an actual operative and then she calls for her to be kicked off the bus and i was like you know again momentarily i was mad uh but then it's obviously later revealed that you know she kicked her off the bus with good reason because sky works best outside the system and the bus is one of the best oh, well, one of the best places in system as you can get she's gonna have hand and all these different agents looking over her shoulder like judging her for her unorthodox like uh, unorthodox methods so it's best for her to go her own path and find calls in her own way and then and then let um may and, and ward and the team know when she actually catches on to something so she actually was cons like considering sky as her best asset so Props to May. Props to May. I mean, she 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 did even call like me out and what I mean, like you know, you you don't always have to assume the worst of me, you know. Like I do care about the you guys. You are my team. Um, so she actually was looking at Sky in the sense of what is her best ability, what is she best at, and Sky is a hacker, and you know, like like hacking isn't really something that's really like looked like uh, accepted within Shield. It's pretty much frowned upon. So. And that kind of thing would not be, you know, like, 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 hand would not let that kind of thing slide under under her watch. So best to put may, but best to put Sky off of her watch completely. So she had a point. She had a point, and she and she made it. So props to Sky for actually, uh, props to May for actually, um, for actually taking Sky's best abilities into in, in 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 into open perspective and actually, you know, putting her out in the playing field in that sense. Um, so yeah, apologies to May for having judged her actions too early. She was right in the end. Um, but yeah, Sky did a great job this episode. Sky did a fantastic job. I think she, I think the highlight for me, I think it's, it's the elephant in the room, but the highlight for me was her impersonating May, like, oh, like that, that, that's the, the, the clothes, the, the, the mannerisms, her voice, stone cold, like she pulled that stuff off perfectly. Um, there, there were a few times she slipped up, but at the same time, those guys hadn't even met Melinda May, so they, 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 they wouldn't know the true meaning of badass if it literally hit them and then roundhouse kicked them in the face. So, either way, she did a great job. You know, she she even she she she, she, she saw that jacket and she thought, you know what, that is my girl Melinda May style. That is Melinda May style. So she just um, hooked herself up with that and then you know used her espionage skills to get to um, to um, to. James Rath Rathbone Rathson 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 I think it was Rathson um, to to Rathson's house and using his computer. I mean, dude doesn't even have to use how to use his own computer. Like, I mean, I don't know. He said he has an assistant that does all that stuff for him. Well, I wouldn't be surprised if he, if he just like lays back in some kind of recliner and just you know reads out words for his assistant to type into whatever. But yeah, dude just didn't even know how to use his own computer, so she had to use one of the one of the actual LAPD agents to actually hack into the computer for her. Um, but um, but yeah, Sky she she did a great job. She did exactly what May knew she would be capable of doing. She actually worked outside the system, worked her way in, and found uh, Coulson using her own capabilities. Um, and she she actually proved herself to be a worthy asset of the team, and it showed that she can work out on the field on her own. 
like she was, she 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 her task was reporting back to the team at the end of the day. But she proved that she can work on her own out on the field to serve her team. She can do that. So, May and Sky are both equivalently like equivalently leveled badasses. They both have their own skills and they both recognize each other's skills. So, yeah, that was that was great to see. That was seriously great to see. Um. And even even her hand to hand combat's actually kind of you know like she she's been watching May since day one she's been watching how she fights and she she's picked up a few things just by watching May fight as well like the flip over the shoulder the the, the side sweeping leg and everything like like everything like taking out the, the uh, taking out the um that that one LAPD agent like she just she just she had that stuff ready at the snap of her finger she had that stuff ready, um, but um but yeah that was pretty great to see. Um, we had Van Chat, who was kind of like a, 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 in some ways he was a slightly more minorish aspect of the episode, but at the same time he was still important to actually finding Coulson, and we found out that he was, um, he was the seller of alien tech, he is the seller of, of alien technology that um, other people can't get their hands on, and in this case mostly Chitari. And I found it to be a recurring thing within the movies and the comics. I think, I think last time I it was when I read the Endgame prelude. I think, I think it might have been the Endgame prelude comic. It was either the I think it, it no I think it was the Infinity War prelude comic when they actually showed what Cap and Widow and um and Falcon were up to behind the scenes. Um, and they were stopping an arms deal in Syria involving Chitari technology as well. So Chitari technology, it, it's still being globalized. It's still being moved on the black market all over the world. Like stuff from the Battle of New York. It's just, you know, stuff is still left behind. Stuff is still. I mean, we had the um the helmet from earlier on in the series we had um there was that one shot as well i think i mentioned this a while i mentioned this in that episode there was a one shot um of like a couple who recovered one of the chitari blasters one of the arm blasters and then like it it, it was the only one that wouldn't that, that, that didn't shut down when the whole mothership went down is the only one and they, they found it and they they used it to start robbing banks and stuff and there's been a bunch of other stuff but the jitari stuff and even it's even popped up in age of ultron as well with the jitari tech the hydro it, it, it's popping up everywhere it, it, it's still you know every time you think you've recovered a piece of alien uh, of jitari technology it pops up in two more places so it, it's crazy but um he was selling a jitari kind of um hand like um thingy like a computer or not a computer but like a some piece of chitari tech so he so he I, I mean i feel like in this kind of a world where alien tech does just land on earth like a lot of black market dealers see that as like a very much like an upgrade in business like they, they go from selling like guns and grenades and whatnot to selling photon blasters and freaking plasma grenades and cannons that blast you into another dimension all that sort of stuff like basically what um, what Vulture was doing in Spider-Man Homecoming, but it's crazy. But Van Chat was the seller of um, of Alien Tech. Um, that was that. We had a bit more of Coulson's history being unveiled with this. Um, they played it as heartstrings with the cellist woman, um, saying that you know she she loved her the same. I mean. On the one hand, it could be true, but knowing Reyna, she is a sweet talker. She knows how to get under your skin, how to get into your mind, use what you want against you. Um, so it could just be that she was actually using the truth to try and, you know, like get under his skin and everything. But she did tell him, you know, like the cellist loved him. She, you know, she cried for ages when they when she all told her that um, Colton was dead and all that stuff. So there was that. But then. Obviously, um, Edison Poe and Edison Poe just gets killed off just like that. Yeah. Just you know, like like he, um, I think the clairvoyant even realized that Edison's techniques weren't exactly the best or the most comfortable to use, since he just he was just mercilessly beating the crap out of Coulson. Um, so he eventually made a deal with Rayner, being like, you know what, this guy's not really the team player that we're looking for. So do you think we should off him? And she's like, yeah, well, I totally agree with you, clairvoyant buddy, uh, Mister clairvoyant buddy. Um, and then she gives the phone back to him, and he's like, okay, so where are we? Yeah, just offs him right off the right on the spot and that 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 that, that technology like when um when, when it like it looked like it paralyzed him and then it spread the veins all over his face and then he just dropped down the wall that reminds me of the tech that i don't know what tech it was but it, it was the tech from way back in the beginning back in iron man one stain had it and he used it on the ten on, on the ten rings leader before killing him and his group and he also used it against Tony when he first outed himself as the, the villain and as the traitor in his life. He used that against him. It's some kind of like um par paralyzing agent that like I mean 
But I mean, in his case, it was it, it just emitted a high frequency noise that paralyzed him because he had like earbuds in that prevented him from hearing it. Um, but in this case, it's like you know he just ha holds the phone close to his hand and then it just sticks there and then spreads. I think it, 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 I don't know if it exactly is that technology. Maybe it's been improved or something, but it reminds me of that technology. So they're really pitted. They're really like acquiring all of these old villains' technology and just using it for their own gain. That's that's crafty. That's crafty. There's some arts and crafty stuff. Um, but yeah, so he, so Edison Poe has been offed by the clairvoyance, and now Raina, I mean Raina has been captured now. Raina's been captured, um, and she's headed straight to the fridge. So the clairvoyant, I mean, to my knowledge, the clairvoyant does that doesn't have any other players left on his chess table. He might have soldiers and whatnot, but the suspect, the clairvoyant is a ghost in the wind he is now left to either look for his look for new people to recruit for his cause or he will try and find a way to pounce at shield at the right time whilst shield actually actively tries to find out who the hell he is and where the hell he is but yeah we will have to wait and see what that is but um but yeah so Rainer captured by S.H.I.E.L.D., taken for interrogation, and Edison Poe dead. So that leaves the clairvoyant on his own, pretty much. Um, oh, no, not on his own. He, he still has Mike, and he'll very much likely, um, do, would, like, do, like, make Mike do whatever, he, like, do what he wants him to do, um, with the kind of reward of, like, oh, you do all the stuff for me, I'll let you see your son again. He'll probably use that against him, so he has Mike, and probably a bunch of other soldiers as well. But, um... But yeah, so that's that. Um, but yeah, Coulson also took Mike's death closer to heart because he lost his father at a young age. So that hit that one hit hit close to home for him. So he lost his mother as well. So he lost his mother. He lost his father. He has no biological family left. He, I don't. I'm not ex 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 extensively aware of what his family tree is. Like if he has any siblings or if he has any adoptive kind of family members or distant ones or what what happened. But I mean, Coulson doesn't seem like, I mean, given his job, he doesn't really seem like much of a, you know, much of a blood family man. Like, like this is his family now, basically. Anyway, like, did this team, did this team of agencies got that he started off with, this is basically his family now. So, you know, in, in, in that case, the blood, of the, the, the blood of the covenant is thicker than the blood of the womb. Is that how it goes? I was about to say the blood of the water, but blood and water are two very different things. Um... I'm pretty sure that's how it goes, yeah, the blood of the covenant is thicker than the blood of the womb. Yeah, like, the, the family you choose to be with is, you know, like, stronger and better for you, or can be better for you, than the blood the, than the blood of the family you're actually born into. So, yeah, but I mean, in this case, I mean, he, he, he's, he lost all of his other family to death and whatnot, so now this is his new family. Um, and S.H.I.E.L.D. is his family as well, so... Or, oh, more accurately, like, Hill and, um... And Cap and the Avengers and Fury especially as well. So these these guys are all his family. So that's all he really needs. Um, but yeah, so like seeing Mike's death at that at that, at that point really took a toll on him. Like I like seeing another seeing another child go through what he had to. I was because like, I he I was thinking like like my mind is like like when she said like oh it must have hit you hit you close to home seeing another boy losing his father so he's so young and so quickly i was like thinking what bruce wayne am i in the right universe here and then and she was like oh just like you did and i was like okay that makes more sense because again the batman story has been so you know done so many times it's like that that origin story of oh boy loses his parents in an alley at such a young age grows up to seek violence on the streets as opposed to therapy like that's you know like that kind of concept has just been ingrained in my mind so much it's just uh, that's just my go-to answer now um but yeah he did lose his father at a young age and his mother either sometime after that or around the same time so that took a toll on him seeing mike die and seeing ace lose his father like that took a toll on him so yeah that was that um but colson has also been conditioned to remember the phrase, it's a magical place. Whenever someone mentions Tahiti, he's been brainwashed pretty much to to automatically say, yeah, it's a magical place. But this time, it's like he he clocked it. He he became self aware of it. Like, is it? It's a magical pl. Wait, I keep saying that. Why do I keep saying that? Like he he knows now. Like he said that too many times. For it, like it, it's too good to be true. Now he said that too many too many times for it to sound normal anymore. Like any time someone mentions it, it's like yeah, it's a magical place. It, it doesn't even feel natural anymore. It's like he's inclined. 
to give some kind of re- review of the place anytime someone mentions it. So that was his first kind of um, his instinct to Rayner. Like I mean, I think Rayner actually proved to him that something was wrong because, sure, Shield is a a, a, a um an organization that that deals with information and security and the security of information. So obviously they'd keep a lot of stuff at different clearance levels, but someone's death should be, like, a person's death should, like, the, the information of a person's death should be available to them, given that it is their own death. Like, you know, like, the, the, there is no logical reason that S.H.I.E.L.D. would be keeping Coulson's death from him unless there was something in it that they didn't want him to know about. So, you know, like, she she, she did a good job of, of exposing the lies there. Like, you know, okay, you support S.H.I.E.L.D. and their informational hierarchy so much to tell me this. So why, why would S.H.I.E.L.D. try and hide the info of your own death from you? What would they gain from that? So then he even eventually succumbed to the idea that, okay, you know what? She's actually right. And, like, even it's an answer that they both want. It's a question they both want to know the answer to. Like, obviously... Colson for personal matters, but um, but Rayner for research purposes. She wants to. She wants to know how she can bring her centipede orders back to life. So you know, it, it it's like one side is actually curiosity and actual personal information. The other side is just malicious intent, pretty much. Um, so yeah, but but yeah, like that, like seeing him eventually succumb to that point, like okay, turn the machine on. I'm going in. Like seeing him at that point, it's like okay. Things are about to get real dark now. I think things are about to get deep, like up close and personal here. So, once they actually got in, um, once they actually got in, the things we saw inside that thing, so it slowly transitioned from a nice, warm, sunny beach with massages and mojitos and, you know, like just you know, like, like a nice lady massaging him and a nice man bringing him mojitos. Um, you know, like that kind of stuff. It's like they they programmed that whole visualize visualization into him. Like like they they took a happy memory from his past, and then they spread that all over his head. Anytime he tries to think about what happened in Tahiti, he gets the image of having been massaged on a beach and given free drinks. That's, that's what he envisions. That's, that's, that's what he thinks Tahiti is. That's, that's what he thinks his recovery is. Like, oh, they resurrected him somehow, and then they just sent him to get a massage on a, a massage on a nice beach before sending him back to work. That's what, that's what he thinks it is. But the truth... I need to catch my breath for a second. Um, but the truth is so much deeper and so much darker than that. So much darker. Like, that's that sight of actually... Of them actually operating on his brain, like that is something I did not expect to have to see. Like, where was it? Is it Bloodman's hand? So where was it? Um. Yeah. So oh Jesus! It's like. They literally have his head. Like he's awake during this as well. So he's in. Okay, so he's in a hospital room. There is a doctor that we he later talked to who was constantly against this. He was ethically and morally and emotionally against this in every way. He was like, listen to him. Just let him die. Don't do the stuff to him. This is incredibly. That's his actual brain popping out. Okay. Um, this is not right. We should not be doing this. That was what the doctor was saying. And then there were other doctors going ahead and in, 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 in doing it anyway. So, Coulson had brain surgery done. Actual brain surgery. So, chances are they resurrected him successfully from the, the heart stab wound that he um, suffered from Loki's scepter. But then he said the trauma, I think, I think maybe it was the, tra- I, I, I'm thinking it was the trauma of having been resurrected or maybe having gone through that whole ordeal from going through through death. To resurrection and then just not knowing what happens like you're suddenly brought back and you have no idea what happens like that trauma lasted lasted for days like he, he was dead for days and i think I, I think he said they tried seven operations to bring him back i think yeah probably seven operations i'm, I'm thinking maybe the trauma might have been from him drifting through life and death throughout each of the operations each of the operations did, did something to bring him back but maybe just not enough 
So then each of, each of them brought him back just a little bit more, but he was still aware of what was happening. He was still aware that, oh, he's dead now. Okay, he's alive again. Oh, he's dead now. Oh, he's alive again. Like he, he was aware of that kind of stuff, and he was aware that they were doing some stuff to him. And that last one, that seventh one, they're doing full-on brain surgery. So like, they're like, like neurologically speaking, he was just traumatized and damaged as all hell. So they had to find a way to, you know, um, fix that if they could. So by the end of it they said he had just lost the will to live like 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 and it, it's just like he he's saying like like please i'm begging you let me die like he he like like throughout the throughout that entire scene he's constantly saying like just let me die let me die let me die like he's enough of this he's in pain probably both physically and mentally and just just everything with with everything going on he's just, he's just in pain like i don't know how you can be awake during that like having your head just sort of open your brain showing in there you know, so like, 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 surely he'd be under some kind of anesthesia, or, 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 or I mean, or maybe that means his brain would at least partially be on shutdown. So maybe, maybe, maybe they, need, they, they needed his brain active to know which parts were in need of fixing and whatnot. So that makes sense then. It, like, like, I mean, because when you're awake, that's when your brain is most active, obviously. So with that one, you would know which, like, which areas of the brain are most affected because that one's active and that one's playing whichever trauma section is active and. All that stuff, but damn, Jesus, wow, it's quite the sight. I mean, it's all CGI, but still, that's that's still quite the sight. Um, but yeah, so he was dead for days, and he went through. They went through seven operations to try and bring him back, and maybe also to fix him. And I'm thinking maybe some of them were to bring him back, the others or the the others were to fix him, or maybe I don't know. Wait, let me, let me listen to that last clip again, the very last piece, the very last piece. The very last piece. Fury moved heaven and earth. So he tried everything in the books and even off the books. Yeah. Yeah. No good doctor would ever allow them. Yeah. Okay, so they kept him alive to... Yeah, to monitor brain activity, yeah, to see which ones, yeah. Yeah. Um, what was the machine? Yeah, so... Yeah, so I, I'm thinking, right, whatever resurrection technology they used, it was not the best in any way. Like, the guy literally said, he, like, the, the scientist literally said, um, like, wait, what was it? He, they, he mentioned his name. What was his name? I keep calling him the scientist. What was his actual name? Uh, what was his name? Okay, yep. There we go. Um, oh. Apparently he just said evening doctor. He didn't even say doctor whatever. But yeah, so apparently that that's what it was. But um but yeah, so whatever like the stuff that they used, I'm I'm thinking maybe it wasn't the best. It was maybe at best it was experimental surgery maybe. That that's what it was like like they discovered new techniques and they hadn't even put it to proper testing yet and Fury went through it anyway he moved heaven and earth he he ordered doctors to use techniques and operations that no good doctor would ever use this one was the this guy was one of the guys one of the one of the doctors being like you know this is unethical do not do this we should not be doing this just let this man go in peace um so th so each of those operations I, i'm thinking maybe they brought him back some maybe some of them brought 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 him back and maybe brought him brought a little bit more of him back piece by piece. But by the time he even was fully alive again, the mental damage um, from those operations um, was still too too far off balance. It was too far off balance that they had to fix that. So the rest of the operations could have been to fix what to fix the neurological damage. And the guy even said the neuro the neuro the neurological damage was the worst. Like the trauma he'd endured both after like both through death and through resurrection was just unthinkably bad and so that was what they were aiming to fix um so like um the in the seventh operation the machines that were working on his brain 
which were, were restoring the version of Colson they knew. Like, like, like by the end of it, like, like by that, b before that operation, Colson was a completely different man. He had lost the will to live. He was constantly telling them, "Let me die, let me die. I don't want this. Let me die." So those machines were working to restore the will to live, the actual in in endurance that Colson actually had. Like, presumably, that whole identity, uh, identity as well, and they presumably use those machines to ingrain that memory like instead of thinking of the hospital room he'd think of Tahiti the magical place and like he would never have to know about the the even worse trauma he'd endure, in, in, endured endured um, on the operating table for, for days for days so Jesus Christ to think about that as well but that site again is having his head sort of, and, and they kept them alive so they could so they could monitor mental activity. So like you know, they kept them conscious even so they could monitor mental activity and actually see which parts were most damaged. Because then his brain's brain would be active; he'd be thinking a lot more or even struggling struggling to think. So they'd be able to locate which parts were actually affected and fix those as as necessary. But damn, dead for days and seven operations. Seven operations, Jesus, that is just unthinkable. Wow, and these are like, these are like life-changing operations. Like this isn't even something simple. This is something that broke him down completely. Like, like most of these operations left him a broken man, and the last one was the one that did did its best, did the most effective job of restoring him and who he was. Ah, <sighs> so God damn it. God friggin' damn it! So this is what Fury had been keeping from him all this time. This was the magical place he'd been he he'd been led to believe was such a magical friggin' place. Wowza, wowza, damn. Okay, um, but then I'm still I mean I'm still under the belief that I mean we 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 didn't really see much of it. I don't feel like I mean yeah I mean. There was like like an IV bag, like an IV drip bag with like some something blue in it, which I don't really think is anything Earth made or anything human. But I mean, I guess that that's to be explored, explored at a later time, maybe. But I mean, I'm still under the belief that you know that there there is still no Earth. But I mean, there is still nothing completely man-made or nothing completely Earth-based that could do that. Because I think you know, like um, the fact that I mean. Them saying that the, the like the doctor saying that the, the 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 techniques they used is something no doc, no good doctor would ever allow. I'm thinking maybe something that poses as a, as a higher risk, or maybe something that 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 like um would bring him back. But again, poses a higher risk in the fact in the sense that it would leave behind more damage than it took away, so more neuro neurological damage. Um, but also maybe something that had been un that hadn't properly been tested maybe something that was just like experimental so they they couldn't properly put it to use in such a life altering way even if it was meant to save save a life so you know there's th 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 other factors that compa th th that kind of um come into impact here when kind of you know exploring how it's actually unethical and all that sort of stuff so yeah but god damn it Colson's been through so much so damn much um but um but yeah i mean i don't even know what else to say what else to say on that but like like that that kind of like like it, it, it just brings a whole new kind of light to colson it brings a whole new light to him and the fact that you know like like him to, to think back back at the beginning of the season like him being brought back would have been something simpler maybe they just used some miracle technology to bring him back like but now we know for a fact it's a lot it's really not as simple as that. Like you know, it's like they they they, use, they definitely use some unorthodox kind of methods and stuff that isn't medically approved. But Colson, but Phil, but Fury, knowing how much Colson meant to him anyway, knowing how valuable of a, of a team member and asset that Colson was, he moved. He literally moved heaven and earth, and used any and all kind of scripts in the book and outside of the book that could possibly be used to bring Colson back. Like he he ordered all of this. He ordered all of this to happen and then knowing the effect it would have on Colson, he ordered for it all to be kept away from him and to be hidden away from him. So I mean, I don't know if we're gonna see a point at which he might confront Fury or try and like like talk to him about this, like see what the hell this all was and why why it was all done, but I don't know, in the end, they hinted at it. They they hinted at it from the beginning as well. I think you know, like obviously we saw the flashback of um, the Doctor and um, and Fury being like, you know, and Fury like the the Doctor and Hill being like, you know, he doesn't know the truth, does he? And then and then Hill was like, he can never know. He can never know the truth. Like that would be too much of him to bear. Like it was bad enough bringing him back and then and then watching him slowly fall into that kind of abyss of of despair and that that abyss of kind of giving up on everything 
but then to actually subject him to that truth, like to remind him of what he went through and to remind him of who he used to be, um, is just going to be too much for him. It's going to be too much. So, <sighs> I'm, I, I'm just in shock and in in awe right now. I'm just my 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 mind is completely blown. His one was being was being operated on. Colson's was being operated on. My mind is just blown. But um, but damn, this was a big episode. This was a great episode to watch. Uh, um, but yeah, what else is there to talk about? I don't really know. I mean, now that we've we we know, just I mean, I'm I'm pretty sure like this isn't the full story to the operation. There is so much more. Again, I do believe alien te- some sort of alien technology was involved in this. I think uh, again, I, I mean. It's it's not just the fact that it's actually uneth- uh, like unethical, but I don't really believe any one of these um, odd techniques, these surgical te- techniques, could have been could have possibly been man made. Um, even even though it's the it's the MCU, so stuff exists there that doesn't in the real world. But still, it's you know it's I I I I would find it hard to believe that alien te- alien technology, especially after the Battle of New York, alien technology didn't play a, a role in this. I mean. I don't know if they used um, Chitari technology in this or something else, but I'm still going to hold on to my theory of alien te- of alien technology playing some kind of role in this. I'm still going to hold hold on to that belief until proven otherwise. But um, so far we just know that the the, the they used some very very kind of unapproved like disapproved and very very unethical kind of methods to bring Coulson back and to restore him into the man he once was. So. Yeah, he's been through some stuff. He has been through some stuff, but that is our boy Coulson. He comes out stronger in the end, and he also eventually finds out the truth. So, yeah, but that was that is pretty much all I have from this one. I don't really know anything else, but if you guys do, um, if you guys like um, have any stuff from the episode that I failed to pick up on or failed, or failed to note down or anything like that, then absolutely feel free to leave it in the comments below. Um, always love reading comments from you guys, and you know, seeing how much you guys love these reactions is one of the one of the things that actually motivates me to keep going. So, love hearing from you guys at the end of the at the end of this at the, at the, end, at the end of these videos. Um, but yeah, I think that the team held up fairly well as well. The, the the team themselves held up fairly well in Sky's absence and working on the bus with May, um, with with with, with hand even. So they they held their own pretty pretty strongly, and May even again May like knowing Sky's true strengths and putting her into the appropriate playing field was a smart choice um but yeah strong teamwork strong drama strong twists and reveals and everything everything packed into this one episode and i'm i'm i'm, I'm i can only assume that there's the, i can only assume that there's so much more to go so looking forward to seeing everything else this show has to offer and seeing what more they explore in terms of the uh, in, in terms of colson's um resurrection and the centipede stuff and all of that stuff all in good time all in good time so yeah, that was Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Season 1, Episode 11, titled The Magical Place. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you guys enjoyed it, then salt and burn that like button. Uh, comment, comment on what you thought of the episode and what you think is coming up next for our Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. And yeah, that's it. So, I will see you guys next time.